Okay, so just FYI, the audio might not be as good as it normally is, but we're just going to walk through um, the Explore 3 on page 87 and 88. So if you look at the instructions, basically they say access the, the FET simulation called Gravity and Orbitables. And so if you actually, let's just go to courses, we just go... So it's right, it's right here, it's in the modules, but this is the one right here, bam. And then the link for it will be right here here so blad out so there's the link so then and then it says to click mod model okay i'm going to click model then it says just go ahead and read through each simulation so we'll go through each one and um we'll just kind of talk through the questions all right so choose the simulation of the sun and the earth so if you look over here is the one with the sun and the earth cool turn on gravity force path and grid so i'm going to turn on gravity force path and grid just like it says next thing it says like this um what do the blue arrows indicate? So these blue arrows right here, what do they indicate? And it, hopefully that reminds you that they indicate force, right? So they represent force right there. All right. Um, and they represent what kind of force in particular? Gravitational force. That's the force we're talking about. So using the images, compare the size of mass of the Earth. So just using the images we have right here, and these are not to scale. If you look down here, there is one that says to scale, but that's not what we're looking at right now. We're looking at... Um, just what is it in this model? And so if you look, how many Earths do you think you could fit inside this sun? Maybe 30, 40, 50, somewhere around there. So it's about that much more larger. So the sun is quite a bit more larger, right? And if you look at also, if you look at the actual arrows, that, that gravitational force is only the size of the sun right there, where the Earth, right, like it looks like this gravitational force is like going out and really pulling that in the opposite direction there. Okay, cool. So we'll keep using. Using the sliders to increase the mass of the Earth and the Sun. What happens to the blue arrows when you make this adjustment? So let's just go ahead and if you look, boom, now it looks like that, that the gravitational force is increasing. If you look at them, boom, now it looks like we might get end up in some sort of uh, issue so it looks like the the earth is going to get pulled much closer to the sun because those gravitational forces are interacting so we're going to just kind of press play because i'm just the type of person who's like let's just see what's going to happen so the orbit looks pretty normal here if you look at the days though whoa it looks like it's sped up so it looked like as it was closer to the sun like that gravitational force was pulling it even more because it was closer and I don't know if we'd make it because that seems pretty close we might get burnt up and it looks like it was speeding up and if you look at the orbit of the earth let's just watch it till it gets almost back to bam so I pause a little bit but look it was almost in half so it seemed like that part where we were going around seemed like a lot faster was going on like the like it sped up there and then it slowed down as it was getting further away because the gravitational force couldn't act on it as much okay so then it's so go ahead and write down what you saw that happen again and then um let's go ahead and say it says click reset so we're going to go ahead and click the reset we're going to keep the gravity force the path and the grid on right so we're going to have all that on and then it says um press play blat out and let's just see what happens and then it says what does this gray line like what is this gray line what is that supposed to be Hopefully, you're thinking, oh, that's the orbit. It's tracing the orbit of the sun. I mean, orbit of the Earth around the sun. And then that says, what objects orbit each other? Okay, cool. So that looks like that one. Let's move and take a look at simulation number two. So we're going to clear all that up. And then it says, for that one, I'm going to move myself up here. It says, choose the simulation of the sun and the Earth and the moon. All right, for sure. We're cool there. Click the play button and just see what happens. So let's just go ahead and click the play button. And if we're looking to see what happens, and so I'm going to turn back on the fourth, the the path, and then the grid. I'm going to turn all those back on. So if we look what happened, it looks like the moon is going around the earth, and the earth is going around the sun. So <clears throat> what does the purple line represent? What is this purple line that looks kind of like a flower? What does that represent? And that represents the orbit of the moon around the what? Around the Earth. And then also represents the orbit of the Earth and the moon going around the sun. So that is kind of the moon's orbit and how it orbits the sun. And it's a little bit different than the way that the Earth does. Okay. Um, 
why does the earth have a circular pattern and the moon have a flower shape? And so you can talk about that. Like, what's going on? What is the moon doing differently than the earth is? Okay. Cool. So that should be that. Um, cool. So then let's go on to number four or number three, simulation three. So I'll move myself. Oops. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm on the screen anymore. If I'm not, it's totally fine. I don't mind. I'll, just put my, I'll go over there. So now we're on simulation number three. Uh, again, it says like this. Choose the simulation for the Earth and the moon. So I'm going to do that, Earth and the moon. Cool. And then it says using the images, compare the sizes. So go ahead and compare the sizes. Talk about that. And then what's the next thing? Click the blue play button. So I'm going to click that. And if you look at the Earth, but you got to look closely, it looks like the Earth is moving just a little bit so it looks like the gravity from the moon has some effect but if you look at this arrow this arrow is saying the moon is being pulled in much more than the earth is actually moving there so look closely at the earth what do you observe about its motion so again talk about that and then increase the mass of the moon so it's maximum so increase the mass of the moon all the way to max which is at 2.0 what's going on now Ooh, so as the mass of the moon increases, something more is happening with the Earth. Look at the Earth. Look at look at how it's moving. What's it say? Right? So what's going on? What do you observe? The Earth looks like it's moving quite a bit now. So because the mass of the moon has affected now how the Earth actually moves. Use the sim um, speed slider at the bottom of the screen to speed up the simulation. Okay, where's that sim slider? It says at the bottom of the screen. Oh, right here. So we're going to go to fast. Boom. So we're going to speed that up. Boom. Bro, like it is moving. Oh, look. And now you can kind of see it right here. It is moving. So the it looks like the earth is moving kind of in this, but going down, down, down. So it's moving like out of there. So it would move out of its orbit, right? And then let's see. What do you observe about the motion of the Earth and Moon system? So talk about that. What do you observe about, because the Moon still is going round and round, the Earth, but something different is happening with the Earth now. Um, why do you think the movement is happening? So explain that. Like, and that should have something to do with distance and mass, because that's what affects gravity. Okay, cool. So now we're going to move on to the last simulation, and it's the one directly below me, and number four. And this one says like this. Choose the simulation of the Earth and the satellite. So boom, now we got the Earth and the satellite. So, and if you look like this force is not bigger than the Earth. So that means the Earth probably is not moving. And if you look at the satellite, the force is bigger than the satellite. So then that means it probably is gonna be moving, right? So let's talk about that. Using the images, compare the size. So go ahead and compare the size and then click the blue button. And we already got it going, so it's already playing, right? So we're already moving. Um, which object orbits around the other? Hopefully that's really clear in, in this simulation. Which one's orbiting around which one? So it's the satellite that's orbiting around the Earth, right? And then turn off gravity. What do you observe? So let's turn off the gravitational force. And it looks like, is that how we turn off the gravity? It looks like turn off gravity. So yeah, I turned off gravity and I still got on slow. So let's, I mean, we could put on normal or, or fast. So when we turned, oh no, I didn't turn off gravity. So gravitational force, I didn't turn it off. Here it is, turn it off, boom. Oh, hey, it was gone, it was gone. So when we turned off the gravity, what did we observe? What did you guys see? The satellite did something, it just went woo, and then went gone, right? So that's what we observed. So these conclusion questions, let's just talk about them right now. How do you think astronomers can determine the gravitational force between two celestial objects without measuring it directly? And so as you can see, the gravitational force has something to do with the objects orbiting around each other, right? And being able to stay in closer proximity. So it has some things to do with that, right? And scientists are beginning to develop the technology to observe the sun like star like other stars distant from the solar system. They can even detect large Jupiter-like planets orbiting some of these stars. Other stars appear to have no planets, but astronomers can see the star wobble a bit in space. What do you think that means? So if the star is out here and there's nothing around it, what do you think it means when it's wobbling? It probably means, right, 
because we saw the earth wobble a bit and we saw the moon wobble. I mean, not the, and we, and we saw the sun not really move. It, it was cool. But here, let's, let's just take a look at that. Let's just go back to this system and say, what if we increase the mass of just the planet and not the sun? What would happen? Oh, we got to turn the gravity back on. Whoops. All right, let's reset that thing. So let's just have these two and we'll just up the mass of this planet and see what happens when we do that. Oh, and it looks like the Earth wants to actually go a little bit further away. So what do you think would make a star wobble? So that's, that's that last question. So what do you guys think, okay? So I'm gonna leave that a little bit up to you to hypothesize why you think the star might wobble. All right, y'all, that is everything for this lab. Peace.